today I'm going to show you my uh, cordyceps experiment. I, uh, I have the flow hoods on now. You don't really need the flow hoods on for this part because these are going to go in the pressure cooker. But I have some work to do later so I'm just uh, getting the air in this room nice and filtered. And excuse my appearance, uh, just getting over a cold and I probably look awful. <laughs> uh, so here's the broth that I made, and in this broth I put some, put I think five milligrams of caramel extract. Uh, I put uh, 20 milligrams of this glucose powder. But uh, I'm not sure what I did with the paper, so I don't know the exact measurements. But uh, I put. Uh, maybe it was three or, or five milligrams of this peptone in and it was either three or five of the yeast extract. I got the idea for some of these ingredients from reading a lot of uh, research papers from China and cordyceps cultivation where they talked about maximizing cordycepin production and uh, I found that uh, peptone and Things like glucose were brought up a lot, and uh, there was also paper noting yeast extract. So uh, I figured I'd give it a try, and I have this broth here that I've already made up, and it, it, it actually smells quite awful. It smells like something like cordyceps would grow in. In the jars, I have just a very small amount of rice because I think it was William who who told me that uh, that you don't need a lot of rice just a little bit of rice so I just covered the bottom so that you couldn't see any glass and I'm going to add a little bit of this extract to each one of these jars or broth I think this one has has a little bit too much broth. I'm just kind of guessing on the ratios here. Actually, let me give this broth a little stir because it's been sitting here for a few minutes. Make sure everything is all uh, stirred up well. And so I'm just going to barely, barely cover the rice because what's going to happen is, is the rice is going to mix with the broth and expand in the pressure cooker. I think that I want a little bit more rice in that, in this jar back here just a little pinch of rice. So let's quickly get these jars filled up. Try not to put too much in there. like it has a little too much broth, so I'm just going to drop some of that in here. And everything looks about uh, even. I'm sure you guys could give me any uh, suggestions of things that I could do better here or if this is what I'm supposed to be doing since I'm very, very new to cordyceps. I only just got my culture, I think, about three weeks ago or a month. It was kind of funny. It came in the mail. A friend of mine sent it to me as a favor. It's William Padilla's culture, and this thing is just insane. The culture 
which I knew was probably going to happen, you know, when I ordered it. But we were just like, screw it, let's see if the culture survives the winter and the freeze. And it did, and it just, this thing just goes crazy, and it's just, I have it growing everywhere. So I'm going to do some of these jars up with this plate that I have here. I have several other plates in the back, but uh, this is a really nice plate. And I have this culture here, and I know it looks it looks it looks nuts in there because I did not realize that this cordyceps um, it its growth is so rapid, and I'm very new to making liquid cultures, so this culture kind of bred out of control because there are too much nutrients in here and I don't have my own mini fridge, so I'm always afraid if I uh, put anything in my fridge that the people upstairs are gonna not understand what it is and throw it away and um, there's a bit of a language barrier between us. They don't speak English very well, so it'd be kind of a hard thing to explain to them, but Anyways, I'm just babbling now. You can see, like, I don't know if you can see it, like, the mycelium actually floated to the top and started growing on the surface. And if you don't shake it several times a day, you just get that. So, I'm not sure if this is contaminated or not, so I'm gonna try this on a couple of the jars, and I'm gonna try the plate in a few of the other jars and we're going to see how that works out and for my jars I like to use these plastic ball lids they're very cheap you can drill a quarter inch hole in there and as you can see I'm really messy with my RTV I just get this stuff everywhere it's RTV silicone and uh, these are just some filter discs that I got online and cut into little dime sizes and I just glue them on there. Um, people have suggested using unmodded lids where you just leave it loose, but to me, I just, I believe that, you know, I'm working in this environment for a reason and I need my lids to be sterile. Also, I'm not sure if this tiny hole here is going to allow for too much gas exchange because I know that the Cordyceps enjoys a low CO2 environment. So if any of you have any suggestions as to should I tape over the filters after a certain period of time or will they be fine just the way they are, you know, let me know. And, uh, I'm going to be pressure cooking these tonight, letting them cool, and either tonight or tomorrow finishing this up. So, hopefully you enjoyed my video, even though I kind of am still really new to this and not too sure what I'm doing, but I think, I think something might come of this. I might get lucky.